So with me, starting out, I started out um, on the 2nd of January 2001. That was when I started working. I started working in a, in a bank that has now gone on and has merged. And I started out as a greenhorn, completely fresh from school, completely clueless, completely blank. But I chose to learn and through my journey, where I've walked, I've stumbled, I've crawled, and to the glory of God now I'm sorry, I have experienced several things, one of which was where in my first place of working, I was the only lady that was in that team and we were in inspection. And in inspection, the gentlemen got to go out of Lagos to carry out inspections. And then my line manager at that time had said to me that I couldn't go out of Lagos and just steal only branches within Lagos. And I just queried that one day and I said to him, why? And he said to me, because you're not, you're new. And I said to him, that's, that's not correct. Because another gentleman that was also new, who we had also joined the orientation together was in that same team and he was going out. And I reminded him of the admin session that we had carried out. And in that process, I had shown that, look, I had added value to the team, I had detected a fraud, I had shown that I could really do this if I was given a chance. Saying to him something I would always been told as a child, what a man can do, a woman can do better. And then in my eight months, I joined the team to our Abuja office and then we did an audit. And in that audit, I found out some fraud that had been going on where two cashiers that were in the till were de stealing monies from customers' accounts and crediting accounts in their own names or in their sister's names or siblings' names with no one knowing because you know how it is in the ca cash teller. Nobody brings out any money. So they were balancing their books, but I was able to uncover that. And that also propelled me and showed that, look, your work should also be able to speak for you. And with that experience, I realized that one thing I must always do, let my work speak for me, and then I should also learn to speak up, learn to say what I believe is in my mind, not being rude or anything, but just addressing that point. And three and a half years into that job, role, I needed to get married. And in the organization where I worked, they didn't allow spouses to marry themselves. So I needed to come to another organization and I'd made the application to the then IBTC. And in that, in that space, I'd done my test like everyone, I'd done my interview, and I met with the founder, Mr. Tito Peterside back then, and he asked me a question during my interview. And I said to him around the Zenith Bank offer, which was being held, and in that offer, IBTC was the issuing house. Zenith Bank had never come to the market before, and I asked him why that information was not on their website, and I saw him look through and think. So I went on to explain the benefits of that and all of that. I started telling him about the visibility to give the organization. And then I pulled out a sheet of paper that had the website information and began to underline the errors in that whole, in that whole report, the various grammatical spellings that were wrong and things like that. And Mr. Peters, I just looked and smiled. And then I knew, of course, I had gotten the job now. Because I didn't have a second qualification at that time. I just had a first degree with a 2-1. And in IBTC, for entry level, if you didn't have another qualification, either a master's degree or a professional qualification, you would enter at every entry level. So I got in as supervisor, stepping from a level lower than I was coming from. But I knew that, look, it's one of those things that you have to do to be able to move on to the next level. Through my journey in IBTC, I learned several things. IBTC became Stambic IBTC and all the line managers I've worked with always encouraged me to improve myself, to grow myself, to develop myself. I learned values. Integrity is one of those things you can't take away from this organization. I learned that physically and it was by leadership, by example. It's, it, you can actually see it. It's not about saying something and doing another thing. Our leaders show and demonstrate this all the time, which is what I've learned. I began to develop myself. And part of what had happened during my course of my journey was one of my land managers recommended that I go into or I should move into a trustee business, which is where I'm at now. And in that journey, I needed to align because I was completely clueless about the whole trust business. But currently today, I'm one of the five trust ethic practitioners in Nigeria under the Social Society of Trust and Ethic Practitioners, which is worldwide. Not only that, I decided to also 
grow myself to be able to get another qualification to have my executive MBA, which I have just recently received with the distinction. My charge to every woman out there is, truth be told, if you don't learn, you actually stop growing and you need to be able to develop yourself by yourself. Yes, you would have managers that would encourage you and that can see and propel you towards it, but you need to be able to take the decision yourself. I will not rule out the fact that there's the God factor in it. You need to be able to believe, you need to also have faith, you need to also seek refuge where you need to. The journey has been like a roller coaster, there's been ups and downs, but in all of it, it's one of which I'm very grateful that I've had people along my journey to inspire me to attain the heights and by His grace we are going to see much more heights. My charge to everyone once again, and the Choose to Challenge um, experience, just keep believing in yourself, don't give up, find ways to add value. It's extremely important that you do that. Thank you.